Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks so much for checking in on this video. I've been asked for a while if I could show the video of this editing slider board that I use. So here it is in all its glory. So this is a, a P fixer board from the company um, who is it? Pusher Labs makes it. And it's based on the Behringer BCF2000, this one. I don't know if this is the one they're currently putting out. I think this is an older model. I've had this thing for years. Uh, so I think Pusher Labs has more updated models. I know they also have smaller models that don't take up this much space. But these are all motorized sliders. So as I move sliders here, it actually adjusts the sliders in Lightroom. And you can see everything is pretty labeled. Um, I have changed what some of these things do to fit my needs, which is great. Everything's customizable. So I absolutely love that. Uh, but yeah, it's such a fun way to edit, but also a fast way to edit as well. And I have a ton of photos to edit. So I figured I'll just record myself doing this for a little bit here. So uh, I'm going to start with this beautiful prairie warbler here. Uh, it's warbler season right now, and I've been photographing a ton of these birds. So um, I also have this Logitech mouse. It's a, I think it's the MX Master. Yeah, MX Master mouse. So it's got, you know, main button. So left, right, uh, there's a programmable button here. I think the wheel I can program, but then it also has some buttons and wheels on the side. So I have all these programmed to do things in Lightroom as well. And so I can copy and paste settings and do stuff like that just by using my mouse. And basically what I'm trying to do is for the most part, never have to touch any of these sliders. I want to be able to just look at my image and be able to adjust everything from there. So here we go, let's get started, right? So I have my mouse here, I'm just gonna hit that to enter crop mode here. I'm just gonna crop that little thing out on the, the side there, just kind of offset the bird. All right, so doesn't need much lighter, but I'm gonna kick the shadows up, drop the exposure, and then warm this bad boy up because the white balance was off. So that's what I have right here. So here's my exposure, contrast, blacks, shadows, highlights. Um, whites, I actually changed to saturation because I don't change my whites slider that often in Lightroom. And then I changed these to be my white balance. So you can see I can really shift it up warm or I can go magenta, more green, right? So I can just visually dial that in. Now, um, you see me moving one of these at a time. Well, here is one of the really fun parts about using this board is that you can actually adjust multiple sliders at the same time. So check this out. I will drop the exposure and lift my blacks all at the same time. And you'll see these sliders update, right? So watch, I'll do that and then I'll shift my white balance. Like look at all this stuff happening at the same time. Basically as many fingers as I can get my hands on on these sliders is what I can move. So anyway, let me actually adjust this back to where it should be. Get that contrast back in there. So for me now, I have, I kind of have muscle memory for which slider does what. And so it's actually kind of, uh, it's, it's a very fluid type of visual editing. I just watch my screen. I'm just looking at my image up here and not even looking at my sliders or what they're doing or where they're going. And I'm just pushing things around and getting there. Now, uh, on my slider, I can go to the next image or I'm sorry, on the board, I can go right to the next image here. And just like this, watch, look, push my shadows up, warm it up a little bit. Uh, drop those blacks for contrast. Uh, I do use the tone curve sometimes. So that's this wheel up here. So I can actually pop those highlights a little bit and then I can grab my mouse and decide to crop this if I want. So uh, something like that might work. Not a great image. Uh, the perch was kind of interesting. Uh, let me saturate this a little bit. Yeah, you know, nothing too special. Hey, you can't win them all. This one's got a little bit more interest. So I'm gonna go with the crop here. Um, basically just looking to add some contrast. And then um, if I actually hold two buttons on my keyboard, which I think are con a command and option, and then do a left click on my mouse, I actually automatically get the uh, radial filter here, radial adjustment in Lightroom. So then I can just grab that tool, put that on there. If I actually do the same thing and right click, I actually get the linear gradient. So I can get that again. I don't have to actually select that tool and then I can drop it. And you know what? I'll throw another one on this side to just kind of darken that. Uh, this section needs a little bit more burning, this light area there. Uh, I would normally do this in Photoshop, but I'm not going to jump into that. So just for now, let's do that and really drop those highlights and just kind of try to minimize that. So there we go. That's somewhat of the effect I want. And now I can just kind of warm it up a little bit and maybe just add a little bit more contrast and we're good to go on to the next image. 
here we go. We got another one. So uh, white balance is off. I'm going to cool it up, lift those shadows, get it. I'm adjusting just for the bird here. And then again, I'm going to go down to my radial, try and set one that fits somewhat around this bird. And then I am going to darken the hell out of everything else. Really drop those highlights, right? Let's just make it look like there's kind of a spotlight on the bird. Uh, that whole corner can go much darker. I can actually kind of fade that somewhat across there. And then a little bit of that on this side is helpful, but maybe just not quite to that amount. Let's go ahead and crop. At least I was able to do some composition in the camera on this one. So something like that seems pretty good. All right, on to the next one. Uh, this is one I already edited, so it's actually a lot darker here because uh, this is what I did to it in Photoshop. So I'll move past that one. Uh, here we go. Nice pretty image. Let's start with the crop. I'll just get rid of the... Mm, I don't like the in-focus one, but I like the out-of-focus ones. So I guess I'll leave it for now. And that's probably something I'll, I would get rid of in Photoshop. So there's my crop. Let's go a little bit lighter. Shadows up. Blacks down for contrast. Color's pretty good on this one. Yeah, uh, that's kind of where I want it. I love just the, the soft textures in the background. Maybe a little bit more tone in these highlights back here would be good. So I can just kind of drop that exposure there in the highlights and then do the same here with a radial filter. Again, so you see I'm switching tools without having to actually click on any of these tools up here. Uh, and that is because I have keyboard shortcuts or keyboard and mouse combinations basically to get me the tools I need. Um, because I just, to me, when I'm really in an editing session and right now, if I look at my photos here and show you guys, I have 375 photos to basically do this with, to go through and color correct and, and just do quick global adjustments in Lightroom, right? So I don't want to be sitting here fiddling around forever doing this. Uh, I want to be able to just kind of jump through, uh, make these adjustments real quick. So lift those shadows up, drop the blacks down, and then move right along. Now here's something nice as well. I should be able to show you this in just a minute. Um, Gosh, this looks pretty good, but maybe something like that I'm happy with. So let's say I want to do the same adjustments to the other one. Um, I have two options of doing that. I can do it on my board. So if my hands are up here on the, the mixing board, um, the Lightroom mixing board, as I like to call it, uh, there's a previous button. So I can hit previous and it'll bring my settings right over. So that's nice and easy. That's one way. I also have, there's a customizable button. It's actually, if I push down with my thumb right in here, um, I can actually get the same effect. So it'll bring over the previous settings, including the crop and everything. Um, I think there's a way, yeah, there's copy and paste settings up here, uh, but I rarely use them there because my hand's usually more on the keyboard. So I also have um, some buttons I can do command shift and then click the left mouse button. It'll bring up that copy settings window and automatically um, accept what was there. So I don't have to, normally if you, if you press the shortcut for it, you have to then hit another keyboard, uh, or hit return to, to copy those settings. Um, my keyboard shortcut and my mouse shortcut, I should say, are set up to do that automatically. So I just, I click that button there, it copied the settings. Then I go to the next one and then it's, uh, the same command shift and right click paste those settings. Um, so that will give me the same settings without any local adjustments, basically. So you see here, um, I have basically, well, usually this is how I kind of have it defaulted. Um, all of the overall adjustments, except for the local, the lens correction. Well, actually that's fine with putting in, but no spot removal or crop or local adjustments. I leave all those off. So that way I can copy settings from one photo to another and, um, not get those local adjustments like a specific radial or linear gradient or crop applied and then I can apply that. But there are times where I want exactly those settings to come across and then I would just hit the previous button. In this case, I'll do a paste, there's my settings. If I need to tweak it, come right up to the to the board here and then I can do that. This is a tough crop, which way do I go with it? Do I lose this stuff down there? I think so. Yeah, we'll just kind of offset it. And then I went a little too light here, so we'll just tone it down a little bit and there we go, we're good to go. Um, there we go, nice composition in camera. So lift those shadows up, look at that, get the detail in this beautiful yellow-throated warbler. And gosh, I don't think this one needs a crop. There we go. All right, previous, I'll just hit the shortcut to bring those same settings over and then I'll just do a quick crop so I can kind of offset it that way because he's looking down now. And then we'll just keep moving along here. Uh, this one needs a little bit of highlight recovery. So I just I just smack that down like that. Lift the shadows up. Blacks down for contrast. 
a little bit more warmth, a little bit of saturation, and then let's just lose some off of that left side to further emphasize this offset crop. I love these little bits of pine branch down there. So you kind of get the hint. Here we go. Same crop, right? So I just hit the previous button, but this one's a little dark because he's looking down. So I want a little bit more shadow recovery and less blacks. So simultaneously, watch this. Look, I'm just going to kind of shift these together and you can watch the sliders over here. They just move together as I'm moving my hand. See, it's pretty incredible stuff. So such a fun way to edit. Um, I mainly got this in the first place, this whole board. Uh, I chose it and, and purchased it years ago because I was doing wedding photography and I was color correcting, you know, five to 700 photos like this uh, every week. And I'd sit down for an editing session and just using the keyboard and mouse, I was getting some uh, RSI issues, some kind of uh, repetitive stress issues with my hands and my wrists were getting really sore. So by the way, this is a really weird video where it's just my hands floating over here. Anyway, um, so I was getting these issues in my wrists and I, I saw this from Pusher Labs. I thought, A, this looks like fun. B, I bet it will speed up my workflow. And C, because I'm just using my hands a lot more naturally here and on different sliders and in a more comfortable way, it very much solved a lot of those issues where I didn't have my hand just resting on the mouse and keyboard for hours on end. I was kind of back and forth and moving my fingers in different ways and stretching things out. And it, it worked out really well to kind of help prevent some of those issues. So uh, anyway, I'll do a few more of these images. I don't need to go much longer on this. Uh, I'll just let you guys kind of watch my hands for a second here and see how that goes. So uh, crop that way. I'm going to lift the shadows, drop the blacks there. And then there we go. That's what this image looks like. Now let's warm it up the white balance a little bit, a little bit less magenta. So I'm just tweaking these sliders just real subtly with my fingers. And you can see I'm actually using my pinky on the exposure, uh, my middle finger on the black slider, pointer finger on the shadows. Over here I'm using these two fingers for both of my white balance sliders. So I can just kind of, look at this, I can just shift more magenta, warmer, more green, cooler. Like I can just really play with this image so smoothly, fluidly, and then just kind of dial it in right where I want it. And to me, that looks pretty good. I just absolutely love using this thing. Now, listen, I'm not going to set this up if I just have one or two images to color correct. Uh, it's just kind of pointless for that. But if I have uh, a series of images to color correct, like I do right now, um, this board is definitely going to come out because it will let me fly through these images and get a lot done quicker. Um, let me just uh, hop to a different section here. I've been looking at kind of the same images over and over. Uh, let's give you guys something a little bit different to look at and something a little bit different to color correct. All right, here we go. Northern Perula with breath. All right, so uh, I had a horrible composition on this. I was hoping he was going to look that way, but he did not. So let's crop it like that. Definitely need some warmth. The camera chose the very incorrect white balance and there was a little lens flare so I definitely need some um, contrast on the black in there I'd remove that in post uh, in Lightroom I should say in Photoshop I should say there we go I did darken the exposure here so now watch I'll paste the same settings over but now it's too dark but that's easy fix the exposure just lift the shadows up now I have the same white balance yeah, it looks a little reddish there um, but then I can just kind of tweak that and there now I have that that's the crop I like. Now I'm just going to keep bringing the same settings over from image to image. That's one I already edited. I'll paste those settings on here. Crop that. This one is again, I pasted the darker setting, so I got to kind of lift that up just a little bit. There we go. But I do want it. I do want to keep it somewhat moody. And then I guess I could just do a quick crop out of that. All right, copy those settings onto the next image. Totally different crop, so I'll paste those settings, but the same white balance and overall exposure, shadow, blacks, adjustments all come over. So now I can just do a quick crop here and then move right along. All right, so that's kind of the workflow there. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this and got something out of it. And if you are interested, I highly recommend checking out Pusher Labs. They are uh, a really great company. I love these products. They've got a lot of great stuff. And let me tell you, for someone that does a ton of this kind of work, 
um, all the time. It makes it so much more fun, so much more fluid. And yeah, it just makes it, uh, editing that much more enjoyable. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you guys on the next video.